trust alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground fed through the fences drought and storm what i have commands my destiny no power man, no scheme of man can ever blot me from his hand till he returns or calls me on here in the power of Christ I'll stand morning, Sunday 28th day of June year 2020. This happens to be the last Sunday of the month of June and the last Sunday in the first half of the year. Welcome you to our Triumph broadcast of Adonai Covenant Christian Center based in Ukoi, Lagos, Nigeria. I will be speaking this morning on what I have entitled When the Enemy Dies in your place when the enemy dies in your place let's share a word of prayer eternal father we thank you lord we bless your name we worship you we exalt you we lift you high we glorify your name we give you all the praise all the worship all the honor and the adoration father speak to us father lord this morning thanksgiving sunday morning father let us be blessed father from your word all this are done with thanksgiving in Jesus mighty name. Red and mighty is the Lord our God. Red and mighty is He. Red and mighty is the Lord our God. Red and mighty is He. Lift up His banner and His anthem praise. Praises to our King. Red and mighty is the Lord our God. Red and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up His banner and His hand and raise praises to our King. 
Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the old head. East Mount Zion, size of the northern city of a great king. East Mount Zion, size of the northern city of a great king. Great is a God and greatly to be praised. In the city of a God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion, size of the northern city of a great king, is Mount Zion, size of the northern city of a great king. Father, we thank you once again. Speak to us. Let there be clarity of speech, let there be clarity of thought. Father, I commit all the hearers of the listeners, Father Lord, into your hands. Grant them understanding. This are done with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. So, like I said earlier on, the topic is when the enemy dies in your place, or when the enemy dies instead of you. The Bible teaches what Bible scholars call the law of substitution. The law of substitution. So, for example, now, Jesus died in your place and in my place. John the Baptist said, There were the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. We understand clearly well that the wages of sin is death, and everyone that sinneth shall die. So, rather than for us to die, Christ came to die in our stead. In the Old Testament, they had uh, what uh, is called commonly referred to as the scapegoat. So, the high priest will take a goat and... Uh, place his hands uh, upon the goat and confess the sins of the people upon the goat and then the goat was driven out of the camp. So that's where you get uh, the word uh, scapegoat. So that's basically uh, an easy explanation of the law of substitution. But apart from that also, the Bible teaches very well that God is a God of vengeance. God is a God of of vengeance and the bible tells us that uh, precious in the sight of the lord uh, is the death uh, of his saints uh, god is a god of vengeance uh, god uh, says uh, in psalm 116 verse 15 psalm 116 verse 15 precious in the sight of the lord is the death of his saints uh, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Amplified Bible version says, Precious, important and no light matter in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, his loving ones. Meaning that uh, God does not wish uh, for those who believe in him to come to an untimely death, uh, to come to a sudden death, to come to a premature death. So the death uh, of every righteous child of God is as it were a painful thing to Jesus Christ. The death of every... So God will go out of his way to protect you and I if we are believers in Christ Jesus. And he says in his word, he says he will give the lives of men, even the lives of nations, as a ransom. Even the lives of nations as a ransom. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 verses 14 to 16. Psalm 91 verses 14 to 16, 16. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So, everything that is contrary to long life, that the enemy might be bringing your way, 
God says that uh, he will do whatever is possible to ensure that you enjoy long life and show you his salvation. He will set his love upon you. He will deliver you. He will elevate you. He says, because you have known his name, when you call upon him, he shall answer you. Even in trouble, he will deliver you. That shall be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, there is provision for the enemy to die in your stead. When the sons and daughters of men have gathered against you, when the sons and daughters of men are concocting plans against you, he says God can take steps, God can take steps to ensure that their plans and their purposes come to naught, to ensure that their plans and their purposes come to naught. Proverbs 26, Proverbs 26, verse 27, Proverbs 26, verse 27. Whoso diggeth a piece shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone it shall return upon him. So it's basically the law of sowing and reaping. Whosoever diggeth a piece shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, the stone will boomerang, it will return to him. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 8. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whosoever breaketh, breaketh an edge, a serpent shall bite him. Whosoever breaketh a head, a serpent shall bite him. So, wherever they are digging pits for you, that you, your business, your household, your family, your children will fall therein. God is assuring you from his word that whosoever is digging a pit for you, it is that person that will fall into that pit. It is that person that will fall into that pit. Every pit that the sons and daughters of men have dug for you, dug for your business, dug for your finances, dug for your glory, dug for your destiny. He says, they themselves who dug the pit shall fall therein. They used to sing one song, um, any pit where they dig for you, jump or pass. You know? The Yorubas have an adage. They say the person that went into the forest to go and cut firewood is of a necessity going to have to carry the firewood on his head to bring it home. I declare and I speak concerning your life this morning. Every plan, every purpose, every aim, every objective of the enemy to terminate your life. Wherever they are gathered to terminate your life, God will terminate their plans and their purposes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will terminate even their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He who said he will give utopia and see that, even Egypt to ransom you, let it arise on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I, I call upon the God of full vengeance to fight for you, to defend you, to save you, to preserve your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Psalm 2, reading from verse 1. Psalm 2, reading from verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed seed. Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cause from us. He that seated in the heavens shall lie laugh. The Lord shall have them in the reason. So, he says, whatever plans, whatever purposes that they are concocting against your life, he said, it's as it were that uh, they are, it's just a comedy. He says, and God will laugh at them. Why do the heated rage and gather against the Lord and against his anointed? So, every time that they gather against you, they are not just gathering against you, they are gathering against God himself. The Bible says, let God arise and his enemies will scatter. He says, if God be for us, who can be against us? I declare that I speak this morning. We are never gathered against your life. The Lord will institute, the Lord will put to effect that law of substitution. And whatever evil plans and purposes that they have devised against your life, they themselves will carry that thing. They themselves will face the consequences of their plans in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 65, verse 5. Psalm 65, verse 5. By terrible things in righteousness. Will thou answer us, O God of our salvation, who has the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of them that are far off from the sea? By terrible things in righteousness shall God answer us. God himself called himself. He said, I am terrible. I am what? I am terrible. And so maybe you've heard people talk about a person and they say, oh, that man is a terrible person. 
That woman is a terrible person. But they say it in a negative sense. But here now, God is saying, He says repeatedly in His word, He says, I am terrible. He is terrible to His enemy. So the Sunday says, By terrible things in righteousness, eh, will the Lord answer us. So, by terrible things in righteousness, will God fight for us? Eh? I ask and I pray this morning, eh, I pray for even as you are listening, that God will begin to do terrible things on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Eh? God will begin to fight for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Every plan, every and every objective concocted against your life, your household, your family, your marriage, your business, your finances. All those who have said you will not make it, eh? all those who have said you will not make it on time, eh? all those who are standing in your way, all those who are obstructing you, they will fall for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Your enemies will die in your place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Instead of you, it is those who say you would, who, who say you will die, that will die in your place in Jesus' mighty name. Let's go to Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. We see the story of uh, King Herod and Peter. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, the story of King Herod and Peter. I'll read verse 1 to 4. Verses 1 to 4. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James the brother of John with his sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then we are the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after he start to bring him forth to the people. So this man, this ruler, Herod, he laid hold on James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee. John the beloved. So he took James uh, and beheaded James. Uh, and the Bible says uh, the thing pleased the Jews. Uh, why did it please the Jews? Uh, the rabbis of that time regarded uh, death by sword to be a very disgraceful type of death. Uh, so that's the reason why they were pleased. So if a man was beheaded, they, 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 they assumed that that man had come to a disgraceful end. So when James was beheaded. They said as it we are served him right. And then Herod was planning, he arrested, he apprehended Peter and was planning that after Easter, he will do the same thing to Peter. I declare and I speak concerning your life now. God who frustrated the plan of Herod concerning Peter. Every plan, every, every objective, every counsel of the enemy to kill you, to bring you to an untimely death, to bring you to a premature death. All those who are concocting that plan, they will fall for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said they will fall for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So this was the third time that Peter was being arrested. You know, before now, Stephen had been stoned to death. He had been martyred to death. And this Herod came from a family of extremely evil people. He came from a family of extremely evil and wicked people. You know, so this there were many Herods in the Bible. This particular one was Herod Agrippa. And his father was Aristobulus. You know, so this particular Herod is Agrippa. And then his father is Aristobulus. So he's the grandson of Herod the Great, you know. And another Herod, uh, Herod Antipas, was the one that beheaded John the Baptist. So he came from a lineage of extremely evil and wicked uh, people. But God uh, in heaven did not rest. God will not rest concerning your case in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, they put Peter in prison, they put him there, and miraculously, the Lord brought him out of there. But the story does not end there. Let's go on to verse 20 of Acts of the Apostles. That's in chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 20 to 24. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country, and upon a set day, there is always a such day for the wicked. He says he makes all things beautiful in his own time. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. 
there. On a set day, he makes all things beautiful in his own time. And whatever you are passing through, they have been threatening you, they will kill you, they will kill your business, they will destroy your life, they will destroy your business. I declare and I speak that certain day of judgment of your enemies is now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He says, Today is the day of salvation, having not your heart. Wherever they have gathered against your life, against your glory, against your destiny, against your husband, your wife, your children, all those who you say you will not see tomorrow, all those who say you will not see next year, all those who say you will not go over, I declare and I speak this morning, let them die instead of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All those who have risen to terminate your life, to terminate your glory, to terminate your business, I say even as Herod died in the place of Peter, I say they will die in your place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Peter's dreaded enemy died. And the moment he died, Peter was able to go about his business without fear. You will go about your business without fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said you will go about your business without fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It does not matter how many people have gathered against your life. He said surely they shall gather. He said but the gathering shall come to naught if you did not call the gathering. Everywhere where they have gathered against your life. I said they shall fall for your sake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said they shall fall for your sake in Jesus mighty name. Amen. God will rescue you. The God that brought uh, Peter out of prison, he will bring you out of every prison in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I said he will bring you out of every prison in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, every good judgment over your life, over your destiny, your glory, I terminate now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go to the book of Esther. Let's go to the book of Esther. You know, for your own purposes, you can read them from chapters 3 to 9. Chapters 3 to 9. So it's the story of uh, basically three or four persons or groups of persons. So you have Esther, her uncle Mordecai, you have Aman, the enemy of the Jews, then you have the Jews. And this man called Aman, he did not just seek to destroy Mordecai's life. He sought to destroy all the Jews in the land. So everybody that was a Jew, Mode, uh, Haman was a traitor to them. Haman sought to destroy the Jews, but he failed. Every plan, every enemy, every objective, every kind of enemy concerning your life, I said it will fail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said it will fail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said it will fail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, what's the background uh, to this story? What's the background to this story? Exodus 17, verses 13 to 16. This is the battle of Amalek, when the children of Israel had just come out of Egypt. Exodus 17, verses 13 to 16. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under the sun. And Moses built an altar and called the name of the place Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation, I declare and I speak that he who said that this new covenant is better than this old one, if he can say that he will blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens, I declare and I speak, all those who have arisen against your life, let God blot out their remembrance from under the heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said the Lord has sworn that he will be in perpetual war with Amalek. May the Lord not be in perpetual war with all those who have arisen against your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will be victorious in Jesus' mighty name. So that is the background uh, for all of this, you know. And then later on we come to that, the story where Saul was told to go and destroy all the Amalekites uh, and he didn't do that. Uh, so now, this who is this uh, man called Haman? Who is this man called Haman? Esther 3. Verses 1 to 6. Esther 3, verses 1 to 6. After these things, the king Asaurus promotes Haman, the son of Haman the Thar, the Haggadite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were with him in the king gate bowed and referenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him. But, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, 
said unto Mordecai, Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told him to see whether Mordecai's matter should stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reference, then was Haman full of wrath. And he talks come to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Azarus, even the people of Mordecai. So he had issues with one man. But he said, I'm going to seek vengeance or retribution, not just on Mordecai, but all those who are Jews. The Bible says, uh, Haman the Hagatite. The Hagatite is a person who is an Amalekite. So uh, this uh, Haman was an Amalekite. That's what it means when he says uh, the Hagatite. So he was an Amalekite. And that was the very reason why Mordecai refused to bow to him. And uh, Mordecai remembered uh, that God had said he would be in perpetual enmity with the Amalekites uh, and that the Amalekites had been caused by God. So as in the opinion of Mordecai, why should you bow before somebody who God had caused? I declare and I speak concerning your life this morning. Every man, every woman who is caused by God, every man and woman who is caused by God, they will not triumph over you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They will not be victorious over you in Jesus' mighty name. So, Haman took a decision to destroy not just Mordecai, but all the Jews uh, in the land. So he sets his plan in motion. He sets his plan in motion. Verse 8 of that uh, Esther 3, verse 8. Then Haman said unto King Asaharos, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. For if it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Amal, the Tar, the Hagadite, the Hagadite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also to with thee to also to do with them as cement good to thee. Then we are the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of King Asairos was it written, and sealed with the king's uh, Ring, that is. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy and to kill and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adam, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all the people that they should be ready against uh, that day. So he sought uh, not just to kill them, but to take their property thereafter. So it was a two pronged plan terminate their lives, uh, then take over their property. I declare my speak this morning. Every plan to terminate your life, every plan to forcefully take your property, the Lord will frustrate in the mighty name of Jesus. Right? Immediately, the Jews took steps to preserve their lives. They took steps to preserve their properties. The first thing they did was they began to pray. You see that in uh, Esther chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. Esther chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. Later on, they also took other steps. Uh, the Bible says, uh, faith without works is dead. James 2.17. James 2.17. 
Even so, faith, if he had not what is dead being alone. So they did just they did not just pray, they took steps. Messages were ascended to Esther, who was the queen. Messages were sent to her in the palace. This is what uh, has befallen your people. You need to take steps to terminate it. So they were walking from outside and walking from inside. They found favor with the king. Esther found favor with the king. But they also continued to pray. The Bible says men ought to pray and not to faint. So when the enemy is threatening you, what do you do? You do not become afraid. You do not become fearful. You seek the face of the Lord in the place of prayer and fasting. You also take physical steps. Even so, James 2, 17 says, even so, faith, if he had not works, is dead being uh, alone. And so what happens? When Esther had been informed of um, this, uh, she set a plan in motion. The first thing she, that she did, she told the king that she wanted to have uh, a banquet and that the king uh, should invite uh, Haman there. So Haman went uh, to this uh, dinner, as it were, and uh, he came back and he was very, very happy. You know, he was a special guest, the king, Esther, and Haman, you know. As it were, there was nobody there. So he felt very, very important. He felt uh, very, very important. Uh, then after that again, the Queen Esther called him to another uh, banquet again. This time she was going to put her plan uh, in motion. The plan that God has to rescue you, the plan that God has uh, that your enemies will die in your place. Let God put that plan in motion uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let God put that plan in motion uh, in Jesus' mighty name. And uh, Haman did something. He erected uh, where he was going to hang uh, Mordecai. Then went Haman for that day joyfully and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai, so he's just coming from the banquet. He's coming from the banquet. So he was very, very happy and all of that. Then went Haman for that day joyfully and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself. And when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zerash, his wife. And Haman told them of all the glory of his riches, so he is talking with proud, he's full of himself, his pompous, his arrogant, and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and the servants of the king. Haman said, Moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself, and tomorrow I am invited. I am invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availed me nothing. So long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate, then said Zerash his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hunger thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased him, and he caused the gallows to be made of whosoever they get a pit shall fall there in. So as it were, he had dug uh, a pit. He put up a, a hanging device where he was planning to hang up Mordecai the next day. And then um, he went to the palace the next day. That's in extra chapter 6. And uh, what had happened was that previously some people had tried to kill the king. And Mordecai heard about that plot, and Mordecai revealed the plot to the king. So, between that night and the next morning, the king could not sleep. And he was saying, oh, I remember that there was a time that some people planned to take my life. And uh, it was this man that uh, revealed the plan. What have I done to honor the man? So he was thinking of all of that when a man walked in. And when Eman walked in, the king asked him, he said, uh, what should the king do to somebody that he wants to honor, somebody that he wants to show favor to? And Haman thought that the king was referring to him. So he came up with an elaborate plan. Let them put uh, royal garments on the person, let him ride on the best horses, and let the people be, hung, uh, be praising him as he's going on the street. And when he had finished, the king said, as you have said, go and do to Mordecai. 
The table started to change from that day. When the Lord turns around the captivity of Zion, then that saw it thought it was a dream. The tables will turn in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said the tables will turn in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you know, the, the, there's this song that uh, they sing in Yoruba. Oh, you biri 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 for me. Oh. And it says that the, the table has turned out in my favor. I declare and I speak. The, the table of divine help and assistance will turn in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The table of elevation and promotion will turn in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even as Mordecai's time came to be honored, this is your time to be He said this is the time to favor Zion. This is your time to be honored. This is your time to be favored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Haman's countenance fell. He thought he was the one that was going to be honored. So he came up with this elaborate plan. And then he was told that his mother guy and he himself should go and carry it out and he was uh, very very sad he was very very sad so he goes home and he sees uh, the same people that had told him earlier on you know to put up the gallows Esther 6 verse 13 Esther 6 verse 13 I said the table started then to turn and Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but thou shalt surely fall before him. They saw the handwriting on the wall. They saw the handwriting on the wall. And they said, if the tables have begun to turn, if the tables have begun to favor Mordecai, and Mordecai is a Jew of a truth, you cannot prevail against him. I declare that speak concerning your life this morning. Your enemies will not prevail against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said your enemies will not prevail against you in Jesus' mighty name. Your enemies will not prevail against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, he goes back to the palace in Esther 7 for the uh, second uh, dinner of banquet. You know, and then himself, the king, and Esther are seated. And you know, they made merry and all of that. And all of a sudden, the queen said to the king that she was not happy. And the king was like, ah, Why are you not happy? What's the cause of your unhappiness? And she told the king that, Well, there is a particular person who has come up with a plan to destroy myself and my people. Ah, and the king was probably shocked. Ah, how can somebody want to destroy his wife? And he said, What do you mean by that? So probably up till that time, maybe the king did not even know that Esther was a Jew. And uh, Esther told him, he said, well, this particular man has come up with a plan to destroy all the Jews. So if he wants to destroy all the Jews, of a necessity, he wants to destroy me also. And the king said, who is that person who will dare to come up with that kind of plan? And Esther pointed to Mordecai, uh, to Haman, and said, Haman is the one. Immediately, the king became furious and got up from the dining table as it were and he went to the garden probably thinking of uh, what he was going to do to mother cat and the bible says that uh, Haman in that instant knew that the king uh, had determined evil against him Esther 7 verse 7 Esther 7 verse 7 and the king arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath went into the palace garden and Haman stood up to make requests for his life to Esther now he's begging the same people that he said he wanted to destroyed. For he saw that there was an evil determined against him by the king. Verse 8. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet wine, and Haman was falling upon the bed where on Esther was. Then said the king, Will he fall? That is, will he rape the queen before me? Will he fall the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. The Bible says the word of the king is with power. May God speak into your situation and your circumstance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord speak concerning your situation, your circumstance this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. The Bible says the angels of the Lord who are sweet at his command to carry out his word. Those angels will move at the word of God on your behalf this morning to bring vengeance upon the head of your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
9. And Habona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who, who spoke good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him therein. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. The wrath, the fury, the anger of God upon the head of your enemies will not be pacified there until they are destroyed in your place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right. The Bible says it, until Haman was hanged, the anger of the, of the king did not subside, the anger of the king did not come down, I declare and I speak it, I invoke the anger, the fury, the wrath of God upon the head of your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right. The anger of God, the anger of Jehovah, the fury of Jehovah will not subside until your enemies are destroyed in your place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He raised up a hanging device in his own house, and they hung it upon it in his own house. Whosoever get a pit shall fall therein. You need to look for the word that concerns you. You need to look for the word that concerns you. The Bible says later on, the king gave all the property of Amon to Esther and then he issued another letter that empowered the Jews to not just fight for themselves but anybody that tried to destroy them, they should destroy that person. And the Bible says uh, the Jews killed thousands of people, thousands of people. The people who have said you will die, they will die in your stead in Jesus mighty name. I said the people who have said you will die. I said they will die in your stead in Jesus' mighty name. When the enemy dies in your place, when the enemy dies in your place. In 1 Samuel 30, we see the story of uh, the Egyptian servant to an Amalekite. You know, so these Amalekites always had problems with God. He said he would be in perpetual war with the Amalekites. May God be in perpetual war with your enemies in Jesus' name. First Samuel 30, verses 11 to 17. First Samuel 30, verses 11 to 17. And they found an Egyptian in the field, and brought him to David, and gave him bread, and he did eat, and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs, and two clusters of raisin. And when he had eaten, the spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread, nor drunk no water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And hence art thou. And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. And my master left me because three days are gone, I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherifites, and upon the coast which belonged to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said unto him, Can thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear to me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will bring thee to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the ninth day. And there escaped not a man of them, except four hundred young men which rode upon the camels and they fled. So the master of this Egyptian had left him in the field to die. But eventually the person that ended up dying was his master. I declare and I speak concerning your life. I said uh, those who are against you will die in your place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said those who are against you will die in your place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every man, every woman who has arisen against you, let them die instead of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has a way of rescuing his own. God has a way of rescuing his own. And the Lord will rescue you fully, completely, absolutely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
every plan, every aim, every objective of the enemy that they have come up concerning your life. I, I said they will be consumed by their plan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When they arose against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the king said that, bind them and throw them into the fire. Let us see what happened in Daniel 3. Verses 19 to 27. Daniel 3, verses 19 to 27. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that was in his army to buy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their clothes, their horses, and their hearts. And their other garments, and we are cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. The people that threw them into fire. We are the ones uh, that the fire consumed. The, the people that threw them into fire, we are the ones that the fire will consume. I say the enemy will die in your place in the mighty name of Jesus. Right? The word of God assures us in Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 5. Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 5. But now first hear the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, they shall, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the fire kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy right ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable and have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. Hosea 13, 14. Hosea 13, 14 says, I will redeem them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy place. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hidden from my eyes. Repentance shall be healed from my eyes. My brother, my sister, even as you have been listening this morning, do not be afraid of the enemy. Jesus said, fear not men. He says the work that men can do is to kill a person. He says the person that you should fear is God, who can both kill and torment the soul. When you look at the Bible, there are blessings attached to those who fear the Lord. There are blessings attached to those who fear the Lord. When they conspired against Daniel, and they said, well, the king has given instruction, and this Daniel will not obey the instruction. What, did, what happened to the people that gathered against him? They died there in his place. They died there instead of him. The Bible says in Daniel, it says, the very people that conspired against Daniel, the very people that said Daniel should be thrown into the den of lions. When the king came and asked that Daniel be brought out of the place, those same very people, Daniel 6, chapter 24, Daniel 6, chapter 24. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Then their children and their wives, and the lions had mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces, or ever they came at the bottom of the tent. All the people that had Daniel thrown into the land of the dens. In the, the den of lions, the Bible says, they, their children, their wives, we are collected together and given to the lions to destroy. I pray for you this morning. You will not die suddenly in Jesus' mighty name. Untimely death will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every plan, every memory of death, every counsel of the enemy to terminate your life. I terminate every such plan now in Jesus' mighty name. I hope and pray that you have been blessed by this message this morning. And uh, my prayer is that the God of all vengeance, 
we begin to fight for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All those who have been against you, God will give you victory over them in Jesus' mighty name. Once again, this is our triumph of Adonai Covenant Christian Center based in the Koyi, Lagos, Nigeria. We normally meet uh, on Sundays at 9 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Our worship venue is number 10, Koya Avenue, Koyi, Lagos, Nigeria. Koya Avenue is off Mark Fasting, but for now, uh, we are only broadcasting online, but normally we have physical services and then we stream the services online. Stay safe and stay blessed in Jesus' mighty name.